Hello and welcome to What The Hey, where I'm your regular host of What The Hey, and today in What The Hey, I'm once again answering yet another question. When I go to my notebook of knowledge, I see the question of, oh, what the hey is Marvel? Now this question comes from Sandra Brown, so hello to you and thank you very much for the question. Now in terms of a very basic description, superheroes in general have been a large influence in media for many decades. Companies such as DC, Dark Horse Comics, Image Comics, as well as Mirage Comics have helped to kind of pave the way for creating really important superheroes with crazy powers, Marvel being one of the big contenders. The actual name of Marvel has kind of evolved over time for the company. It started off as Marvel Comics and then kind of transitioned into Marvel Mystery Comics, uh, but now today most people just regard it as Marvel. To start us off, what I'm gonna do is kind of introduce the key people behind Marvel and kind of the first ever comics that were ever produced for it in general. So sometimes there's an unnecessary debate as to who actually started Marvel, um, and I'll kind of go into that later, but the person that actually pretty much founded Marvel in general would be Martin Goodman, who in the 1930s created their work through Timely Comics. And it wasn't even until the end of the 1930s when on August 31st of 1939, Marvel Comics No. 1 was released. And even though Martin Goodman was essentially the head honcho for running Timely Comics with projects like Marvel Comics, they had a whole team behind them like Carl Burgos, you had Bill Everett, Abraham Goodman, Joe Simon, Jack Kirby, as well as Stanley Lieber who you may or may not recognize as Stan Lee, which I'll go a little bit into that later as well. Which the original team of people who worked together to release the earlier Marvel comics occasionally ran into some tough publishing periods. Specifically around the 1950s is when people who worked for Timely Comics to produce Marvel comics kind of had to change their name and just general organizations to titles like Atlas Comics. However, there were some good moments in early Marvel history because characters like the Human Torch, Captain America, Vision, and the Fantastic Four were released. Honestly, I had no idea that the character of Vision was so old. Like, I watched WandaVision recently and I was kind of confused by his, like, Halloween costume of, like, a really wacky looking outfit, but, like, it makes sense because he's so old, technically. Also, as a bit of a tangent, it's so cool because some of the characters like the Fantastic Four are getting newer movies, so it's like, they're alive, huzzah! Now, with any company or organization, it's always kind of hard to stick with and gradually transition with the trends and themes that are going around in the current day. This essentially was the case for Marvel because, of course, they had to pay attention to the fact that there were world wars going on. So you would definitely have cases of Marvel characters interacting or fighting against bad guys, whether that was specific occasions like Nazis or what have you, but it was just that Marvel had to kind of transition into having darker themes with their material, which some people associate that material genre change to the change in publisher president which originally the president was Martin Goodman and then it transitioned from him to his son to the eventual and very famous Stanley Lieber, otherwise known as Stanley. As a bonus random not very in-depth fact, Stanley Lieber got his nickname of Stanley in high school and he kept it, so like 10 out of 10, I love consistency. Now this next big step of Marvel history is one that is sometimes highly praised or sometimes highly criticized. And what I'm referencing is that on December 31st of 2009, the Walt Disney Company officially acquired Marvel Entertainment. And why this is usually praised is because Walt Disney is a big company, which means they can put a lot of money into the shows and movies that they produce for Marvel. However, on the other hand, there are some people that argue that Walt Disney, Disney in general, is a family-centered and focused business and organization. So essentially what some people argue is the fact that Disney is a business that wants to get money, they try to appeal to families and as many audiences as possible to get as much money as possible. Some people say that the modern Marvel comics and movies aren't as appealing because Disney is a company that wants to get as much money as it can so it just does what it needs to do to get by. Which I kind of agree with but I'll get into later. However, across the board, no one can say that Marvel Comics and Marvel superheroes have not had a major influence in media. 
and I wrote a brief list, but you've got elaborated and complicated storytelling with all of the Marvel media. Like recently, Marvel just released the ideas for like phase six or something for the movies and shows and I'm like, bro, how are you thinking that far ahead? One of the big things that I'm always impressed by with Marvel is the cosplay conventions or people who cosplay characters from Marvel. Stuff like Comic-Con I feel like will be around for forever because so many people put like so much money and time into it. Another big thing about Marvel is that there's a surplus of comics, shows, and movies. Like, there is so much at this point that it's kind of hard to keep up with everything going on. And then finally, merchandising. Like, there's so much stuff that you can buy for different characters or different movies or shows or comics. Like, it's insane. I mean, in terms of my general opinion, I feel like Marvel is really great. It's really cool. I think that my favorite character would probably be Iron Man, like his general personality, but also like his very smartical particles and he makes cool looking robot suits. I also think that a lot of the shows and movies and comics have really in-depth and creative storytelling. Like the fact that Marvel was able to create a movie like Infinity War was insane because you had so many different characters from so many different universes in one movie. On the other hand of my opinion, at this point with where we're at with Marvel movies and shows, I feel like there's too much to keep up with so no matter what you watch, you feel like you're gonna not be up to date with everything. Like it was kinda easy to have a basic understanding of the Avengers when it was just like Hawkeye, Captain America, Iron Man, Hulk, Thor, uh, Black Widow. But now you have all these characters just from the different Marvel shows that are coming into the movies and it's like, I don't know who this person is and why they're in this movie and why this one line they say is super important because it's in an entirely different series and I'm not up to date. Also, I feel like I've heard this from enough people to feel like it's a valid thing, but the fact that there's so much material for Marvel coming out really quickly and there's a bunch of it, it doesn't feel as exciting to wait for a big movie like Infinity War. Which is fine, like if you want to watch all the things, go for it. I like props to you, I could never. Like, I specifically remember feeling excited to watch movies like Captain America's Civil War or waiting for an Iron Man movie to come out because it was like a few years that it would take to actually have it release. But now it's like, oh, you have She-Hulk with an episode each week or whatever, and then you also have Captain Marvel stuff, and it's each week new stuff comes out, so it's like you're just being bombarded with content constantly. Which, once again, if that's your thing and you like to see it come out repeatedly, that's fine. That's just not a me thing. Which, it's unfortunate because you have recent examples like Miss Marvel, She-Hulk, the most recent Doctor Strange movie, or like the most recent Thor movie. Those haven't been getting the greatest reviews. I've seen the most recent Doctor Strange movie, but I haven't seen the newer Thor movie, and I haven't watched She-Hulk or Miss Marvel, so I don't know what's going on with those, but they're apparently not that great, which is unfortunate. Because there definitely was a time, I feel like, especially around the first Avengers movie and Civil War and like the solo movies with the different characters where everyone was like, Marvel is so cool, it's so creative. So for right now, it seems, at least from what I've been hearing and seeing, that more people are critical of the company than actually praising it and enjoying it. Will I probably go to see the newer, bigger movies when they come out? Probably yes. Will I see all the shows and stuff and all the movies? Probably not. But that's essentially the complicated yet basic answer to the question, so if you have any questions, let me know and I'll get to working on them as soon as I can, but that's about it. So thank you very much for watching. Bye.